So, good evening, you lovely lot. How are you? It is just, uh, what, three minutes past nine here in the UK. Lots of people are going to be jumping on, um, and probably for the uh, for the next few minutes, there will be the email. It's just going out to the email list. Those who are watching or catching up on iTunes or Spotify on the replay of this, um, come and join us on any Monday night you like. Monday night, 9pm UK time, facebook.com forward slash acts on this TV. The Facebook group, this goes out in as well for acts on this TV, which is Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash ats on this tv if you've no clue what ats on this tv is um go to ats on this dot tv because <laughs> that's where most of the meat is um basically i sit down every week almost now um on ats on this dot tv with someone super influential in the acting industry in the tv acting industry in particular that could be a casting director an agent a writer a producer um, a very successful actor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's now over 150 hours worth of content on Acts on This TV. If you are an actor in the UK and you want to get further in your career faster, and you don't really want to spend the next 10 years figuring it out for yourself, go and listen to everything that's over on that website, and you will save yourself so much time. Someone emailed me today, and they were like, "Right, so what is Acts on This? Can, um, what, what's the benefits of it? You know, w- why would I want to listen to a podcast with someone?" And I was like. I mean, to me, it's obvious, but I guess to some people, maybe it isn't. But these these interviews that I do with people and something that I'm going to show you guys tonight behind the scenes of one of these podcasts that I'm just putting out literally after this, um, after we uh, we finish this live tonight, um, you are getting the benefit of potentially some of these people who I have on have been in the industry 30, 40 years. You're getting the benefit of all of their experience, all of their mistakes, everything they can tell you to do and not to do. It's all really like reading a book, isn't it? People are like, what's the value in reading books? Why is everyone saying books are so good? Um, well, the author of a book has lived, you know, potentially when most people write their books, they're in their 30s and 40s, they've lived for 30 years and they have an expertise in a certain area. Um, you can either spend 30 years yourself getting it wrong and making the same mistakes as they probably made, or you can read a book in two days and you can get their entire knowledge on that subject in two days. It's literally like I've got all these books behind me. It's like just grabbing a book and just, if it was a microchip, just like ramming it in your head. You get basically all of that benefit. What was that book? Just Oh, look at that as a little plug for Surviving Actors. That was a Surviving Actors book I just picked up. Um, but yeah, so um, so that's ultimately what I do. If you don't know what Acts on this.tv is, um, you will find interviews with the biggest cast directors out there. Literally, I've nearly had every single person on um, in the UK TV industry. Um, you'll find now round, round table conversations, and I'm going to show you one of those tonight. I'm going to show you a 20-odd minute behind-the-scenes video of one that I'm just putting out literally after this uh, this live finishes with Downton Abbey and Ackley Bridge actor Rob James Collier. Um, you know, you'll know you know him as Thomas in Downton Abbey. He played uh, Martin Evershed in Ackley Bridge. So if you've been watching that, the new series of that recently. Um, and BAFTA-winning director of Ackley Bridge, Jordan Hogg. We did a phone-in podcast for all premium members of ActsOnThis.tv. So if you're a member of the website now as well, you get an opportunity to, um, well, ultimately for us to phone you. You can give me a phone number and when I'm sitting down with these people, rather than, you know, these people that you probably wouldn't get access to normally, um, you know, rather than even having to leave your house, right, I will phone you wherever you are in the country um, or abroad. We'll phone Bobby and you lot who are in Ireland. You know, don't know about you, Tony, in Chicago. Maybe, you know, maybe we could get to Chicago with, uh, if we get some donations for the phone bill. Um, I'm kidding. We'd just phone you. Um, But yeah, you can actually get involved with these podcasts now and you can put your acting career questions, like your personal circumstances within your acting career to these people and then they will give you advice over the phone on what they think you should do. So you're going to see a little bit of that tonight. Wendy Walker is in the house. Just going to read a few comments out and then um, and then we'll get stuck into that. Um, Gareth Williams is here as well. All right, Gareth, um, hope you are well. Um, let's have a look. What else? Julie's here. Bobby's now joined. Andrew Alton Reed's here. Josh Fielding's here. Lisa Richardson's here. Um, Amy's here as well Lynn's here Shelley's here everybody's joining Christian's here God so many people are here um, thank you very uh, very, mu- very much for joining us um, has anybody seen well actually I know a lot of you have because I've had more comments probably than ever before on a podcast from the podcast that I put out last Tuesday that was with casting director Victor Jenkins who casts things like Broadchurch the latest series um, on BBC One called Dark Money um, he cast um, Humans uh, Cl- uh, what else has he cast I mean just cast like absolutely massive massive stuff um, and I had the director Lewis Arnold on Lu- uh, Lewis and, and um, Victor basically cast and directed Dark Money uh, the BBC One series then if you saw it, it finished last Tuesday and it starred Jill Halfpenny I had Jill Lewis and Victor in a roundtable podcast and I've never received so many tweets 
and so many emails about this podcast. I'm going to play you the trailer dead quick. I know most of you will have seen this, but just for those people who haven't, um, it's only a 60 second trailer. Um, you can watch behind the scenes of it on YouTube. Um, but if you want to actually access the full podcast, you've got to go to actsonlist.tv. But here's like 60 seconds of it. And sometimes you know you've done a good audition. You know you can see the look on the director's face that you've done a good audition and you also know you haven't got the part. Welcome everybody to a very special episode of Watch Ross, the Dark Money Round Table. By the time this hits YouTube, hopefully you guys will have just spent the last four nights fully engrossed in a brand new BBC drama called Dark Money. Hey. Jill Halfpenny Hello. in the house, how are you? Oh, good awesome to see, to see you. you. <laughs> Victor Jenkins, cast and extraordinaire. In the house. Lewis Arnold, director legend. In the house. Um, are you just going off? Look how excited they are. The way Victor usually works is he brings a small group of people that he thinks are perfect for it. And then those people know it's only a small group of people you're seeing. Right. And then you you meet those people in the room and you, you, you know, if you have to see more, you see more, but you know, you try to be much more targeted. Yeah. What were your gut telling you when you left? I didn't think I had it. Really? And I'll tell you why. Boom. So that's literally just 60 seconds. It's a two hour podcast. It's, it's absolutely like it's one of the most powerful podcasts I've done because you get all three disciplines in one po um, podcast. You understand how the show was cast, Dark Money on BBC, how it was cast, how, you know, uh, it was directed and what it was like to star in it. Super, super powerful. Those people leaving comments saying it's uh, it's awesome. And some new people here as well tonight who are joining. Joanna, how, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Ryan's here as well. Uh, Ryan Winsley says, thanks for the invite, man. My pleasure. Adrian's here as well. First time on here after listening to some great podcasts. Um, and Ricky's just made a comment about the lineup of the new Marvel films, Phase 4. And I'm not a massive Marvel fan, Ricky, but I couldn't escape the uh, for Raw this week. Do you know what? I wonder if I can show you something. Because I want to do... I'm, I would love to get this guy on for a podcast. Let me see if I can just... Bear with me one sec. Let me just see if I can show you something that was absolutely like... I freaking love it when stuff like this happens. Um... Let me just, I'm just looking on Twitter for something and then if I can find it, I'm going to share my uh, my screen with you guys. They've changed the layout of Twitter completely now. I don't know if you've noticed, um, it's completely changed. Um, let's have a, yes, yes, I have found it. I found it right. Let me share this with you. Do you know, I'm always on about persistence. Before I, before I show you this, right? Um, a podcast that's on at on this.tv that you can listen to if you've not listened to it already is with the casting director of Downton Abbey. It's a, an amazing casting director, a great lady called Jill Trevelick. And she said to me once in this podcast, she said, listen, if you truly believe you have something to offer, so if you're an actor and you really believe, and like no bullshit in yourself, okay, if you really believe you have something to offer this industry, she said, listen, your time will come. You just have to wait. She said, sometimes patience is a virtue, you know. Obviously, you've got to work hard. She said, but you've got to believe your time will come. Look at this. You know Chris Stone, the director? I've had him on for podcasts and many features on this .tv. Um, let me share this with you because look at this. I absolutely freaking love this. don't know if you can read it if you're on your phone because it's such a small screen. But basically, back in uh, February of 2016, Chris put a tweet out which said something like, let me see if I can find that, uh, what it actually, actors, there it is, February the 5th, 2016, actors, dream role and why. A guy called Simu, L L I can't say his name, how do you say that? L Lee, Lou, Lee, oh God, I don't know how you say that. Um, tweeted him back, at Chris Stone Films, superhero, because we deserve to have an Asian superhero, but I also love capes. Um, that guy yesterday, basically, <laughs> or a couple of days before, um, got his dream come true. He was cast as the lead role in Shang-Chi in Marvel Studios' new movie. And Chris put that tweet out. Back in 2016, you said you wanted to be a superhero and now you've got your dream role. How do you say his name? Can someone spell it phonetically for me in the Facebook comments? I would love you for that. I'm terrible with names. But yes, yeah, Simu Lee, Simu Lai, Le, Le, Liu... <laughs> no, I'm so, you know, it's terrible. I want to get the guy on for a podcast though because he's absolutely incredible. I mean, that's foresight, isn't it? To go right, that's what I want. That's what I'm going to aim for. And um, and yeah, I mean, the guy's absolutely ridiculously changed his life. That that is 100% life changing, like career changing, life changing forever. Kev's here from Ireland. How you doing, Kev? Um, hope you're well. Uh, Warren Palmer's now here as well. Lisa's that's amazing. Um, Lou, thank you, Stephen. Is that how you just say it? Lou, not Lou. <laughs> Simu Lou. Simulu, there you go. 
Um, isn't it amazing, though? Honestly, like, just shows you've got to hang in there, but you've got to have focus. You know, he knew what he wanted, and there's other tweets that he sent Marvel. He put one out saying, like, in 2017, hey, Marvel, are we going to talk or what? Um, I don't think they ever replied. Um, on Twitter, anyway, maybe they did behind the scenes. That's how he got the role. But I just thought, you know what? It's freaking cool, that, isn't it? He did it. And that goes for every everyone on here. Um, Bobby says Lou as well. Thanks, Lou. I mean, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Lou. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? Right, I want to play you now this... Tra- well, it's not a trailer. This is like a full vlog. So normally, for those, again, who don't know, um, when I do a podcast for Rats on this TV. I'll film behind the scenes of it for a free vlog that I put out on YouTube. The main podcast itself is for premium members of AtsOnThis.tv, but I um, I show like 10 minutes or so and behind the scenes of the podcast in a vlog that you can watch on YouTube and that's youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Sometimes I put other stuff behind the scenes of my own acting career, voiceover career, online business, life in general. Sometimes we do like just special crazy things just for entertainment. Other times it's just, you know, behind the scenes of the work on that's on this dot TV. Um, all right, Warren, how you doing? Kerry just joined us. So is Joe. Nicoletta's here as well. Lindsay's now here as well from Birmingham. Shout out to you guys in Birmingham. Um, and I want to show you, yeah, I've literally, this isn't on YouTube yet. I just want to want to put it out for you guys first as a little premiere tonight. This is like a 21-minute behind-the-scenes video of my podcast with Rob James Collier, again, who you'll know, as I say, from Downton Abbey. He's played Thomas in Downton Abbey. He just starred in the new series of Ackley Bridge um, as uh, the new deputy head teacher. He's called Martin Evershed. And I also had the... Uh, director of Ackley Bridge and a BAFTA award-winning director, Jordan Hoggon. They came out of the apartment and we phoned a lot of you guys who are on here tonight. Bobby, we phoned you. Oh, Bobby, you know what? Your call's not in the vlog, but it's in the full uh, It's in the full thing. Um, he gave a shout-out to Bobby's mum. Bobby, it's made it. It's in there. You'll be able to listen to it straight after this. Um, but this is just a little taster of uh, of what went on. And if you want to listen to the full thing, and those on the audio experience, if you want to listen to the full thing after this, go to atsonthis.tv, get your premium membership. It's only a tenner a month, £2.50 a week. You know, it's cheaper than a coffee at Costa. Um, and you get access to some of the greatest minds in the industry. So here it is. I can still watch your comments. Um, I can't obviously answer you whilst this is playing, but please leave them. I will uh, write along with you guys. Dougal and Andrew is here as well now. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I'll be back on camera in like 20 minutes. But enjoy it. I think you will. It's bloody funny, but I mean, the full podcast is two hours long. This is just a very, very tiny snippet of it. I'm joined by Rob James Collier and Jordan Hollywood Hogg, um, the star and director of Ackley Bridge. Um, and we're here for you, mate, to answer anything you want to know. What do you want to talk about? Everybody, to episode 57 of Watch Ross, the one we're at Cleanbridge born in. <laughs> Eva Gum! Hey, hey, up, lads! <laughs> Alright, boys, look who it is! Martin Evershed, slash. No, he won't, say, he won't make any, <laughs> any play on words. And Hollywood Hog. Um, Jordan Hogg, director of Atley Bridge, star of Atley Bridge. Fancy meeting you two in a car park in Ernston. I know, I know. What How did this now? happen? <laughs> what we frightening. It is frightening. We come shopping, that's all. It's purely innocent. Come we're to not, Sainsbury's. We're solicited. Exactly. I feel like I'm getting my uh, belly out. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, what we're doing here is we're recording an Atley Bridge phone in special uh, for all members of Atley Bridge. TV. If you're actually not a member yet, get on board because if you were a member like now, you could have been part of this. We're going to be ringing. He's so enthusiastic. Really? Yeah, we got we're me enthusiastic. Like You've got to be enthusiastic. <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to bring the energy up. Yeah, you need to bring it, right? Pumping. We're going to be ringing maybe six, seven people from the Acts oh, in this community, beautiful. actors who need advice on how maybe like they can get their career to somewhere like, you know, you've been... Save for his car park. Yeah, yeah. You've been, <laughs> that's what I've ended up. You've been relatively Don't successful. Ask me for advice. This is the, North, the North West Hollywood. Yeah, this is the North West Hollywood. Um, and uh, yeah, they're going to need advice on like how they can be in a show like Ackley Bridge, what they're going to need to do in order to be seen by directors like you, work with actors like you, um, I'd like a job as well, if that's possible. That's really why I brought you here. Um, 
and Petch behind the camera yeah. like a job. Um, so we're not going to waffle on. We're going to go set up in the you apartment. You are waffling on. I know. That's but exactly what he you're does. Doing. This mm. right. Get used you're to this. On. He does. Did you watch him on Sunday brunch? He would not <laughs> shut up right. And he's going to do this in this podcast. So we're going to go into the kitchen if you give slash me a podcast well. studio with a coffee, <laughs> and we're going to uh, do what is the Ackley Bridge phoning. Bye, girl. So let's podcast. RJC, Rob James Collier in the house. Jordan Hollywood Hog, thank you so much, boys, for being here. Thanks for having us. Anytime, brother. I was about to say, let's podcast as well. Out oh, here. Are we're, we're connected. Well, no, no, I, no, I stole that because I heard you say it a second ago before that, we went that, live. That's, you oh. little. <gasps> when actors that's do harsh, that to you, Jordan, you know what harsh, I mean? They nick a little bit. That's. Oh. Uh, yeah. We'll I, talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. I always say to actors, though, if you see somebody doing something on TV that's great, you know, and you think it's good in, in the performance, nick it. Because I promise you, they've nicked it off someone else anyway. Oh, don't, well, don't. I've not nicked let's podcast off. So actually, I think it comes from. An extension of you remember the fast show when they used to go let's off road. Uh, I've ch- I've changed it so I have nicked it in a kind of a way. Uh, Excellent. Um, everyone is listening. Rob's probably going to be like this for the entire <laughs> for the entire episode. Your paths have crossed recently. It's quite interesting. Two guests have yeah. been on in the past separately. Now you've just worked together on Ackley Bridge. Let's talk about that for ten minutes before we ring people. Rob, your first kind of foray. Well, it's not your first, is it really? But it's 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 your first foray back into contemporary stuff after like doing the Downton film. A um, bit of a new journey for you. What's it been like, Mister uh, Martin Evershed? Uh, I've loved it. Um, the thing that attracted uh, me to uh, Ackley Bridge was the chance to work with a lot of young, dynamic um, kids. Basically, a lot of them as Jordan will know a street cast. Mm. So there's a lot of raw. Is <laughs> there a lot of them are street kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of raw energy you know um and some people haven't acted before but they're just sort of naturals and yeah. Yeah. there's a fearlessness about when you're young, working with younger people oh, um God. and you can tap into that because you, as you get older you get a bit more conservative and you take less risks and they kind of remind you of what you used to be like and yeah. to tr- try and get back to them days and be a bit more fearless and so that was what attracted uh, me to Ackley Bridge and also the chance to work with uh, Hollywood Hog. Jordan Hollywood Hog, who, no, right who let me just say, that just resonates a lot in terms of the fearless thing because like that's what I associate with you, Jordan, after our previous features yeah. is you're like, I mean, because I, I was like, are you really fearless? Are you? I mean, are you? But you are like, I just do it. Basically, um, you know, just stare, stare fear in the face. Yeah, you just get on with it, don't you? I mean... Uh... I I think in my head, I will you to do this. I command you to do this. It's fine. It all goes away. Jedi mind tricks exactly. then, isn't it? No, honestly. I've seen him wrestle a grizzly bear. He really is fearless. Well, you, well, you, you know said I mean? so it something that's quite profound because you said, you know, living with cerebral palsy yourself, you said, um, you know, you've not been able to run away from anything exactly, in your life. Yeah, you've yeah, had to stand like, there and just fight yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Without a doubt. Metaphorically and literally. Yeah, if you bring that into your, your career path, and then especially in this industry, the amount of people you come across and you've about the nose you get and whatnot you can't take it on you have to take it on the chin and keep going because you, you are it. hardcore when i was doing casualty last year basically the the walk from the like the main building to the car park is quite a walk mm-hmm. and we were driving from like uh, i was in, in one of the like the the like bussy type things you know mini bus things yeah. you get driven around in when you when you're doing a job and we like they went jordan do you want to lift your car you're like no, just going to basically hustle there myself. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. Going to grip my teeth and keep going. Yeah, don't want to lift. It's just don't matter how long it takes him. He's walking there. So, uh, right. yeah, fair play, man. We so how did role. you get involved with Ackley Bridge then? Um, well, I, I went for a, a meeting about for season one. Um, and I got down to the last two directors for season one. And uh, didn't get it. But um, it came to season three. And they had a big name director uh, lined up for block four and he had to pull out at the last minute ah. and i felt really bad because i got the call at three o'clock on a friday afternoon i was due to start coronation street at 10 o'clock on the monday morning so you had to just go i'm out cory yeah yeah so i literally had to phone cory and say i'm really sorry i want to do this i need to make this step up i need to go to this next level so tell us a little bit about like what it was like working together on set this is the first time you ever met each other yeah it was one we just had a bit of a Messed about and had a bit well, of laugh, didn't we? We had a ch- I and you told me you knew Ross and I yeah. kinda you told me to look out for him. So we had that we had you as the um common denominator. As the bridge. And the bridge between everyone in Building. this industry. Exactly. Ross exactly. Ross can build a bridge. <laughs> I told you I'd sing at some point exactly. and I've linked yeah. it in. Exactly. He's um, uh, he's got it. I know it was great because uh, 
what I love about Jordan and any director is there's no pomposity about him. He's down to earth. He's authentic. He's just an, like he comes across as he is. He's just a normal bloke. And that's what you want. You don't want any of this. I think some directors can lord it over a bit because they, just the name, the title director, me, I think they think they have to behave in a certain way. And you don't have to. You get the best out of your actors by just uh, sharing a common bond with them, just being um, like them and being normal and chatting yeah. things through. And he was very big on... He, he knew what he wanted to shoot. And you can tell that within the first day of working. Within the first scene, you know, the director knows exactly what he wants. So there was never any sort of tensions, time pressures that we were aware of because he knows his shots, he knows what he wants. But within that, he's one of those directors that is all very flexible. So, you know, if you went, oh, I don't feel like I would get up at that point or I might be over at this point. He's like, whatever you want, go with it, let's do it. You know, very, very laid back in that kind of way. Whatever we wanted to bring to the table, he could adapt to it. Very often, directors can't or they won't. They want it their way. They've got it in their head and they are rigid that it's got to well, look this Because you way. like, Bri I know, that, uh, well, you know, from what I've seen in you work, Rob, it's like you always bring your own ideas to the table quite a lot of the time, even if it's like not even stuff written in the scripts. <laughs> you've done that before. Yes. And you've got away I with it. you've got to go, even if it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and even, yeah. You want to do stuff even well, if it's shit. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I, I, what I like to say, there was a freedom on Ackley Bridge. I mean, it's at eight o'clock slot it's a young youth drama mm. so within that there it's not for example as nailed on as Downton Abbey nine o'clock uh, Sunday grown-up drama written by Julian Fellows yeah. Oscar winner so you couldn't really mess about with that and you shouldn't really mess around with that with Ackley because like I said I mentioned before there's a lot of street kids you know there's a lot of people who are non-actors we were encouraged to ad-lib a lot at the start of scenes and at the end of scenes and the kids were fearless at that I just um, went a bit beyond and ad-libbed at every different part of the scene whenever I could <laughs> uh, just sometimes and sometimes I need pulling back on that um, but if there's an opportunity to ad lib, I will go, go for, for it. it. Do they get a prize? Sort of. Is it a bit like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes, it, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Phone a friend. He definitely is. Come on, Andrew. Come on, Andrew. Come on, Andrew. Oh. Yes. Hello. Andrew, it's Ross. How are you, mate? I'm good, Ross. How are you? Very, very well. I'm joined by Rob James Collier and Jordan Hollywood Hogg, um, the star and director of Ackley Bridge. Um, and we're here for you, mate, to answer anything you want to know. What do you want to talk about? Basically, e this time e is yours. Evening, gentlemen. Hello, Hello Andrew. How, how are you doing, you, sir? sir? I'm good. Yourself? Very good. Top Tick banana. Tickety boo, Andrew. I'm tickety, <laughs> tickety boo. boo. Yes. Questions to do with period dramas, period drama casting. There seems to be a bit of sometimes a different remit as opposed to like modern stuff. Are there any like things that you can do to put the ball more in your court to get cast in them as opposed to like the, the modern things? It's um it's a strange one that because I've heard um casting directors and directors say He's got a period-looking face, oh, yeah, a period-style face, which yeah. I, I, I kind of sort of get when mm -hmm. they show me a picture. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in by default, your genetics will give you a helping. Because <laughs> some people do have, when you show them a picture, it's like a sort of a, yeah. a throwback old-style face, yeah. like yeah. cool in a cool way. Mm. That And I've heard mm. that said. Um, in a, any other way, I think... It can, you can sort of get pigeonholed. I think it's quite tough to get into yeah. period acting because um, you went straight mm. from you went straight from Corey, yeah, into Downton. And that was the first job after Corey won it after you left. Yeah, him. well, I wait. I, I wanted to. I was offered work, but it wasn't the work kind of work that I wanted to do. Celebrity um, says her hands, and I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. That kind of stuff. Don't maybe, really do that. Maybe not as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and and it's just. And I was kind. I'll be honest with you. I was surprised that I was asked to come forward, but then. I had a chance in terms of the upstairs, downstairs scenario of Downton. I was always, I mean, the way I sound, I was always going to be downstairs. So it kind of broadened the mm. scope in terms of casting because of my background, uh, which is, you know, I'm a northerner, uh, working class mm. background. So that enabled me to sort of get in. I do know people who've dressed up for the part and, and got the part. I know um, Sophie McShearer, who plays Daisy in the show, who's like the um, the kitchen maid in the show. Yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, funnily enough, she's never told me this, but I was at a... For the movie, I was asked to come in and, and cast someone who was linked with Thomas's storyline. So I sat in with the director, Brian mm -hmm. Purcell, at the time, uh, and the casting director, and it's fascinating. And I was talking about what do you okay. what do you look for when people... And they explained how Sophie came in. 
in a sort of outfit that was period. She'd sort of gone to town and studied it and got a few items of clothing that were, that lent itself mm. more to, so she'd done her hair completely not modern. She was one of the few who weren't wearing makeup because she'd done a research in, and obviously kitchen maids. She'd no, even gone sure. to the extent of having her hair down. So her ego was totally out of the building is what they first noticed. So that really mm. set her apart. But at the end of the day, they just said once she started speaking, she was Daisy. So a lot mm. of the time, it's just, it's so hard to get into the room and you need a, a casting director to take a chance on yeah. you and be a bit imaginative. But mm. a lot of the time, if the acting's good enough, that should see you through. Definitely. I think building on what Rob said about um, having a face of period drama, I read a, an interview uh, the week before last um, about Spielberg, about casting for um, Saving Private Ryan. And okay. he said the people of that, when you look at old photos of people of that generation, they had a different look about them mm. because yeah, they did. he said it's because he put it down to the hardship they'd already had in their lives. They'd just seen another war and mm. the look in their eyes was a lot colder and a lot harder. Um, mm -hmm. And I think building on that, if that's probably a, a little subtle tool to have in there as well. Yeah, I've been in quite a few, well, a lot of short films. Um, so obviously people are liking my work. And I'm, I've only I've only had three paid uh, jobs. So I need one more to be able to get on Spotlight. Right, mm. this is good. You're right. This is good. Yeah, this is critical. This is going to be your yeah. key. So your next, you're absolutely the thing, in my opinion, and we'll go around. You guys can say what you think as well. Um, but I would be like, right, it's imperative you get on spotlight as quick as possible. One way yeah, to get that extra credit would be, have you heard of Monologue yeah. Slam? Yes, I did one. I did the Birmingham one um, this year. Well, um, did you actually do it in terms of like I you? I did it. I, I auditioned for it and I got through. I, I was that, just doing that, it. That counts as a, as a spotlight credit. If you perform at Monologue Slam, yeah. so you've got your four credits. That's a, a 100%. Oh yeah. whoop, whoop, congratulations. So, so, so first, first, Spotlight, here we come. Yeah, first thing in the morning. Yeah. I really mean this. Like This is what about fast action, right? Fast action. First thing in the morning, you apply to, or now, after you know, after this phone call, it's all electronic. Go on, get get oh it. Get on Spotlight, sign up. You, you qualify. You've got three yeah. paid jobs and Monologue Slam. You're in. Mm -hmm. What can we do for you, basically? You're, th you're our third caller, Luce. So, um, oh, wow. You're plowing through them tonight, then. That's well, good. we say we're plowing through. The first one was 25. It's quite, it's quite a slow pace to be yeah. fair. <laughs> so, um, what 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 can okay. we help you with? What do you need to know? Uh, well, I've got a question for Jordan actually. Yeah. Okay, um, that's good because about... Rob's just been hogging the limelight all night. This is, oh, really? This is true. <laughs> a nice play on his on his uh, name as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the question? Well, sorry, Rob, you have a break then. So, Jordan, hi, Jordan, how are hi. you? Not bad. How are you? Good. I'm have I good, met you, you before, Lucinda? Have, have you what? Have we met? Have I met you before? Your name rings uh, a bell. I, no, we've not met in person, mm. no. Uh. No. No. Um, which would be nice. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's a question for you, really, and it's okay. just uh, how how much of an input do you, as a director, have um, in the casting process and with the actors that you would like to work with, mm -hmm. how much of a say do you get to say, you know, I would like to bring that person in uh, to, to, to the casting. Can you or... give your mates a job? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I have a, 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 a massive amount, to be honest, because when I, I initially start a job, um, I'll have actors in mind for the part anyway, and I will give that them suggestions to the casting director. I mean, I'll, put, I'll probably put about four or five up for a part. Then I might get a call from the casting director saying, There you go, folks. You've just seen a couple of clips from the full podcast that was like pretty epic. I think it must have been long. close. It was long. It's close again to like two hours, maybe. Uh, maybe a bit after. Shout out to Rachel. They, they can't hear you because you're not a mic. Oh, so, oh, forget it then. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Rachel shout out to Rachel Newnham who uh, we couldn't get on the call because she went to voicemail and then phoned us about four times during the next call then we tried to phone in the next call and couldn't get through so uh, Rachel we will get you on at some point in the future two things came up that I want to expand on well loads of things came up actually but two things I just want to just expand on exclusively for this vlog is uh, one is ultimately like the combination once again i say it all the time of hard work and patience or perseverance yeah in terms of being match ready as well for when an opportunity comes up rob i'm gonna let you expand on that 
Yes, hello again, everyone. Yes, be match fit. Um, if you're not working and you're sort of lamenting the fact that the agent is not ringing you, don't just have six months out of work. Go and find a student production. Go to your local theatre. Go to your local university. Like, for example, in Manchester, Manchester Met. You'll find a load of stuff on the billboards or on Facebook now and everything, how they do it. Get involved in a film. Doesn't matter how low the production is or whatever. Um, as long as it's pretty good, get involved because you'll get better. And also, it means if that phone call goes off the next day for an audition, that can change your life. It means when you're walking into that room, when they say, so what have you been up to? Which is what they always say, isn't it, Jordan? Um, you can say, well, I've just done a short film and it was a really uh, demanding role. The character was this, that and the other. And it shows that you've been proactive you're working and that makes them interested so you're match ready you'll be confident in the audition as well because you've been working um work leads to work so always be match fit so instead of moaning that your agent's not getting you jobs or auditions be ready for the moment that they do because when it comes you don't want to have not done anything for six months because you won't be match fit yes and i always say well i didn't make this up i got robbed it off someone i can't remember who um but yeah Right place, right time doesn't exist. It's opportunity meets preparedness. You can get an opportunity if you're not prepared to take it because you're not match fit. You're going to miss out on, the, on that job that could uh, change your career, change your life. Um, Jordan, want to expand on you. Um, something, Well, a couple of things that you said, actually. You talked about being, I'm going to get this the right way around, John Wayne Tough, James Dean Cool. Okay, I'm going to get you to expand on that. And also, you know what? Like, As a director, you hear this a lot your mind is very often made up within a couple of minutes or even seconds of an actor walking in the room. Just what, what is the truth in that? Um, do the James Dean thing first though. <laughs> well, John Wayne Tough, James Dean Cole, we're in a really tough industry, but it's the best industry in the world. So, and you're going to get a lot of knockbacks and a lot of no's. So to ride that out, I think you've got to be John Wayne Tough, but building on what Rob said, if you're well prepared and match fit, you can walk in the room for your audition, James Dean Cole. Even though you may be terrified inside, you need to exude confidence and coolness and calmness. And uh, because um, I'll be making, you, I'll be honest and blunt and straight to the point. But as soon as I see you walk through the audition room door, I'll have a yes or no in my head. Then it's up to you to sway it more towards yes when you're in the audition. So all you've got to remember is John Wayne Tough, James Dean Cole. Very succinct, articulate, and to the point. Um, listen, I hope it's been useful for you. Um, cheers, boys, for coming all this way. These guys have driven, like, how, how many miles? Uh, I don't know how many miles. Three and a half hours in a car, though. Three and a half hours in a car, and Scarborough? 104 miles. Bloody hell, you know what I mean? So uh, this is this is what these guys are doing for you. So uh, do get over to actsonthis.tv, listen to that full podcast. If you've not got membership, get one. Literally, best thing you can do for your acting career. I say it all the time, but seriously, no bullshit. Um, super powerful content on there. Going to be back next week patch with another vlog probably yeah. um another podcast um yeah let us know if we can help you with anything social media's up on the screen right now for me and jordan um rob doesn't have social media but we're going to get him on social media Are you getting on twitter soon or what uh i think i've got a few projects uh, ideas i've got going and i think i need to come on board and join the uh, social it's not a revolution anymore as it is it's, it's just a way of life and being so i'm not going to join the revolution because that happened about 15 years ago but i'm going to get on board when i've got some stuff to talk about um you know what i mean something relevant well you've got this podcast so you're going to get on it tomorrow um going to get him on uh, on social media um thanks for watching we do a little catchphrase at the end um as a bye to everybody what have i been saying to everyone at the end of the calls Bye for now. Yes, but we're going to do it after a countdown in three, two, one. Bye, Bye for now. now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. I've cast two people who've done nothing on TV before. Um, and like what Rob says, uh, I had a lad in my first ever short film I did and I've used him since in Coronation Street. And there you stuff. go. There you go. Well, get, you, get so. your show reel tweeted to at D-I-R Jordan Hogg. Duh, <laughs> Jordan Hogg. Get it on Twitter. Um, Send your show reels to Shane Meadows. You're from yeah, Nottingham. Yeah. He's why from not? that region. Just ping it why over to him or his star? people. Exactly. Whoever, whoever asking people. Well, why not? What's he going to say? 
There you go. So that is a... Uh, see, I was giving you content right until the end there. I don't know if people realise that, but if you wait until the very, very, very end of a vlog, you'll always get a little bit of extra content at the end. Normally, it's me making a blooper uh, or a mistake. Um, this week, there were no bloopers or mistakes, so it was some real, actually, <laughs> actionable advice about actually just freaking doing it. Um, Match Fit, says Fiona, never heard of that before. Yeah, ultimately, it's... You know what I was saying there at the end, like, about, you know, people people band this term around. Oh, you know, that, put, that actor was just in the right place at the right time they weren't right okay because if you're not prepared to take the opportunity you know you might actually be in the right place but it's completely the wrong time you know being match fit ultimately means that you're working on your game you're working on your craft working on even the technicals you know things like shooting self tapes and um, working on you know being technically ready for when those uh, those opportunities come up i'll um I'll tell you about, about something that happened to me last week where I had to be technically ready. Um, it's an incredible opportunity that could lead to, well, it's the biggest opportunity I've ever had in my career, in my life. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, had I not been ready um, to take the opportunity, it would have been pointless. All right, Bernard. Bernard's in the house. Loads of people joined during that. Um, I really, what do you think of it? Really, I hope you enjoyed it. Loads of people were saying these, these shows just get better and better. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for that. Um, says uh, Andrew cheers for that Imogen says beyond Mandy and Spotlight where else can you find these opportunities I'm all for finding work myself I really love what you said about your agent collecting 20% of the fee and such in theory should only be required to do 20% of the work for you and the rest is on you but honestly so, so in terms of opportunity Imogen right depends what you're looking at in the acting industry as opportunity for me I don't look at opportunity is purely briefs as something that's going out literally as a casting brief on Mandy or on Spotlight. Um, unless you're repped by you know a decent agent, a lot of the casting briefs you're going to be able to get access to yourself won't be the top, top work. It depends where you're at in your career. You generally will have to work your way up, obviously, through the work that isn't the top, top work first in order to get to the, the top, top work. Um, so that's, you know, that's cool. That's how the industry works. So uh, if you're starting off and you're looking for credits to get on Spotlight, there's really no better place to look than places like Mandy, um, Star Now, etc. And um, for me, opportunity isn't just brief. For me, the thing that has paid the biggest dividends in my career, full stop, have been relationships. And the opportunity for relationships in the industry are absolutely everywhere. Um, the the reason now I can call on people. Did you hear what Rob and Jordan said in that interview? You know, Robert, what they like a combined four hundred odd miles they'd driven to be with me to record that podcast. That's because I've nurtured our relationship probably over the last sort of seven years. I've probably known Jordan maybe three years, four years. Rob, Rob actually, you know, probably yeah, ten years I'd say. Um, and then you can call on people in the industry, you know, to help you out with stuff. And that's because you give them value first. Um, you help each other out. You grow together. Um, those who are at drama school, don't turn your back on any of the people who are graduating in your year that you actually, you know, that are okay that you like. I mean, there'll be some people you like. I never want to see you again. <laughs> I definitely had that at drama school. But you don't know where these people are going to go. You're, you're, And you're not, you know, it's not using people. It's nothing like, oh, I'm only going to stay friends with you because I want something from you. None of you know where you're going to end up. Um, but helping each other out, self, helping each other self-tape, you know, Petch, my cameraman, the guy who helps me with that vlog, um, he needed, I hadn't had a self-tape for, oh, well over a year. Um, he got like four in a week um, a few weeks ago. And he's like, he just kept ringing me up. Mate, I'm so sorry. I've got another self-tape, got another self-tape. I'm like, mate, it's absolutely cool. I will help you. I'll do 20 self-tapes with you. It doesn't, really, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, because there will be a time where, you know, I'm probably going to need that as well. And lo and behold, like a week later, I ended up getting two self-tapes in a week. So, you know, th these things can happen. It's just reciprocity, nurturing relationships with each other, helping people out in the industry, um, getting involved in conversations on Twitter, on LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, Facebook, I guess, in terms of, you know, Facebook groups like that. So on this Facebook group, adding value and to people there, you know, going to networking events, meeting people. That's real opportunity, Imogen. It's not just... Um, the briefs and you know when you do a good job you work with somebody you do a good job for them uh, and you follow that up and nurture that relationship that person's going to trust you and bring you in time and time again for stuff so it depends I don't know if everybody's looking um, at the word opportunity as just literally an opportunity to apply to apply for a job you never know what's going to happen and I didn't so this this thing I'll tell you about this very quickly um I interviewed, I've got another podcast coming out, maybe next week, the week after. I've, I've done it all, though, with a, a fantastic agent called Natalie Payne, Payne Management. Um, it's a London-based agency, used to be in Manchester, um, deals with stuff on both sides of the pond, actually, does quite a lot of international clients as well. 
Um, awesome, awesome um, young agent. She's done very, very well, uh, built a business over the last eight years, rep some great clients working in great stuff. And she's just launched a book, um, which is like a inside look at like, you know, an, an agent's perspective, it's called. And I was like, actually, Natalie, you know what? I had, I had her on a podcast when she first set up her agency eight years ago. I said, I've seen this book and uh, it sounds really good. Why don't we do a podcast and you can, you know, we'll do another phone in. We did it two weeks ago, a phoning podcast where premium members of Acts on this got a chance to uh, you know speak to Natalie over the phone, get advice on where they're at in their career, if they're looking for an agent, looking to change agents, nurture their relationship with their agent. She's very, very honest, Natalie, like really honest. Uh, and we had a great time. Now, a couple of days later, um, she's not my agent, by the way, okay, right? So Natalie's just a friend. And I get an email from Natalie giving me a heads up on an opportunity um, that my own agent hadn't seen. You know, so this is something that, you know, like, had I not been in Natalie's mind, she might not have thought of me for, and no one else had seen this. Um, and she sent me this email going, hey, I've seen this, maybe you should apply for this. Cut a long story short, I did, did a self-tape for it, sent it off. It's a it's a really big opportunity in the States on a show that will film in, in Toronto at the end of this year. Um, really big role, biggest role of my life, um, biggest opportunity probably of my life in my acting career. Um, and I got an email from the producers a few days ago to go, look, we really like your self-tape. Um, I don't know what the next stages are. There'll probably be more self-tapes to do and stuff, but it's an opportunity. I don't know. It could, it could amount to everything or it could amount to nothing. But it's an opportunity that I got through a relationship. Not, I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have seen that brief online. A few, actually, thank you, a few other actors on here actually did send, uh, send me a heads up about it um, a few days after Natalie had. But Natalie gave me that first like, heads up about it, that first in. Um, and that's all built on a relationship. So that was where that opportunity came from. So... Ultimately, in your career, like don't just be thinking that your jobs are going to come from applying on Spotlight or applying on Mandy, etc. Um, other people are going to have your back if you are a good person in this industry, um, if you give out value to other people, if you're not just in it for yourself, you share opportunity uh, with other people, um, you'll get a lot back. Magical things happen when you deploy kindness. It's as simple as that. And um, so look at what you're looking at as a uh, as an opportunity. Um, some people are also asking about the podcast with Rob and Jordan. It's out tonight at on this.tv. In fact, I think it will have now. Let me just check. I bet it's actually gone live on the website. Don't go there yet and leave me. Stay on here for a minute. We'll have a little chat for a sec, but let me show you where it will uh, where it will be. If you want to go and listen to that full two hour chat, this is at on this.tv. Um, you'll need a membership to get access to the full chat. But if you click on what's new here, top right hand corner, what's new, you go to the what's new section. Yeah, it's published. There you go. Ackley Bridge Round Table with Rob James Collier and Jordan Hogg. There's a 15 minute preview there, the one with the blue icon. For those who uh, aren't members, you can listen to 15 minutes of it. Um, if you want to get access to the full thing, those who are members, click on members area once you've logged in and you're going to find it when you click into your premium membership. So you've got up on the left here, it says round table features. Click into here. And there's the other round table features. There's the dark money one that came out last week. And there's the underwater one that was the week before. Um, click on that. And the full podcast is with the purple label, not the blue one. So uh, that's inside your members area, guys. Um, but yeah, that's on this TV. You'll also get access to everything else. Like, I mean, like <laughs> hundreds of other features, well, dozens of other features with, you know, very famous BAFTA winners, Oscar winners. Uh, there'll be a lot of familiar faces there. Um, saw Julie Hesmanthalsh at a, uh, a read through for the A Word the other day. She's got another job. She's always working, Julie. All of these casting directors that are here, um, biggest casting directors in the industry, full stop. Ultimately, like if you really do want to save yourself a decade of just getting it wrong, um, go and go and get a membership. It's literally the best thing you could do. Um, it's not some sales bullshit. It's just the freaking truth. Uh, so yeah, so um, it is out for those who are asking. Um, Gary says really interesting Julie says really enjoyed that Ross thank you thank you Julie for uh, for being here um, it's all these are the I've got another 40 comments guys I can't read all these I'm so sorry I'm going to I'm going to uh, skip just to the bottom just to see what's uh, going on Brennan says just attended a workshop with Daniel Dresner um, well respected tutor and actor who also works as a life coach his new book is very interesting it's called A Life Coaching Approach to Screen Acting I think he's emailed me about this Brendan um, some great exercises in it with links to his videos. Interesting. Uh, people might want to uh, might want to check that out. Um, Kathy, hope you uh, hope you are well. Um, Chris Edges now joined as well. Hope you're good. Uh, good, Chris. Are you? Uh, can I ask? Are you deliberately not using the word contact? Says Fiona. Um, no, I'm not deliberately not using it. Um, 
for any reason no i mean i just i just look at life so fiona for me like this isn't applied just to my acting career at all relationships is what is the word i would use for everything in life any kind of success i believe is all predicated on relationships i think i've i've not consciously not used the word contacts i mean ultimately you know i guess it they are your contacts you know they're going to be in your phone book and in your contacts on your phone um these people but I just think that life and success and any of the good things within it are all based and predicated on relationships. And the higher the quality of your relationships in general with everybody, your family, your brother, your sister, your spouse, uh, you know, your boss, if, you, if you're in a day job, you know, the director when you're on set, your castmates, um, et cetera. The, the, the more you can nurture and, and invest in those relationships, the more you're going get to get out of them. It's the same as in everything. Um, if you're not going to uh, invest in those relationships, you, you know, you're just not going to get very far in, in life in general. In my experience, you know, I'm certainly no guru, but, you know, that's what I've experienced and that's what my intuition has always told me, um, that if I, uh, you know, invest in, in people, um, then they will invest in me as well. And that's that's definitely, it's definitely the results that I've, uh, you know, that I've, I've seen in my life. So I can't stress that enough. It's, uh, it's really important. It's just doing the right thing as well. You know what? Eric James Dean, I want to give a shout out to him. So um, Eric, for those, give me some comments if you know Eric James Dean. He's one of the most long-standing Act On This TV members in the world. When we started running, bless him, when we started running the Acts On This TV meetups that we do every month, by the way, in person, in London and in Manchester, they are free to attend. Just to buy yourself a coffee. Um, it's just another way to nurture relationships. Come on down. We do them in Manchester at Home Theatre, um, 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. on the first Saturday of every month. We do them at Benugo Bar at BFI South Bank on the first Saturday of every month, 11 till 2 again um, in London. Go to facebook.com forward slash ats on this TV. Check the events tab and you can RSVP there. Completely free, like I say. Uh, when I first started those off, like years ago, six years ago, for many months, and I really mean this, there would only be me and Eric at that meeting. That was it. I mean, now it's crazy. You know, we get dozens of people coming down. I mean, these live live broadcasts, you know, there's been like, the, by the end of this broadcast, there will have been probably, you know, 1,200 people through the broadcast. Um, when all this first started off, no one was listening, no one was watching, no one was attending the meetings. It's just perseverance and your acting career is so very similar. Um, but Eric's probably the most long-standing loyal member of the community like one of anyway and um this puts it all in perspective everything we're talking about tonight's all very well and good guys career is important it gives us fulfillment um and it's something that we should strive you know to to achieve in our lives if it makes us happy um eric's had some really like tough time uh over the last like week in he's basically been hospitalized had to have two operations and um i mean like he's been gravely ill um he phoned me from intensive care a couple of days ago um, and it's awful to hear one of my best mates, like just in, in such a bad way. He's almost like, he's a bit older, Eric. He's probably like nearly 70. Um, and when my old man died, my dad was only 60 when he died. Um, Eric kind of became almost like, you know, a bit of a older, you know, dad kind of figure in a way. Um, and to hear him in such a shit way on the phone, you know, really struggling, fingers crossed, all's going to be well. And that second operation he's had has, has sorted him out. You know, he's as tough as old boots. He's our Eric. He'll, he'll pull through, I'm sure. But, Plus it all into perspective, all of this, like that relationship with him and the relationships just, you know, with your loved ones and the people you really care about above anyone else in the industry, they're way more important. None of this really matters at the end of the day, you know, nothing at all. The, the podcast that's on this, um, the, you know, what we're doing right now, I mean, it's great and hopefully it's adding stuff to your life and it's helping you out. But ultimately the relationships with your loved ones, the people you really care about, your friends, um, this is important actually because I class you as, as, as in that group of people for me as well. Um, that's what really matters, not accolades or, you know, whether I get this job in the States or not. Yeah, it's going to be lovely, but you know what? My health is priceless. That's something that we, I've been so grateful for. You know what? When I, when I spoke to Eric the other day and I was, I just finished a half marathon, I do a half marathon every Sunday and he phoned me and I expected him to be, I'll be on the end of the phone and be all upbeat and like, hi mate, I'm coming out. Cause he's supposed to have left hospital the day before. And then, and I pick up the phone all upbeat. And I'm like, hi Eric, I feel great. I've just done my run. How's it going mate? And then to hear him on the end of the phone in a really bad way just made me like, well, incredibly like sad, but like also incredibly grateful for my own health and my own body. And it's something that I don't think, you know, sometimes as actors, we, uh, well, not as actors, as people, we uh, we give enough thought to. We're too busy chasing the carrot, chasing the next thing. We've got one job, we're not satisfied, we want another one. You know, we've got one agent, we're not satisfied, <laughs> we want another one. We've got one BAFTA, we're not satisfied, we want another one. 
Um, and uh, and it's your health, really. And uh, and as I say, those relationships with the people you really care about. That's so health is wealth, says Andrew. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, Sharon says, really wishing Eric a speedy recovery. Absolutely, and and thanks to everyone who sent him, uh, you know, a bit of love and stuff on Facebook. I put a post out. Wendy says she saw it. Uh, the post wishing him well. Um, when he's on a ward, Wendy, I'm going to try and get to see him. I'm going to see if petrol drivers over because my eyes, I can't drive, um, so uh, I can't go over and see him. And you're not allowed when someone's in intensive care anyway. They've got to uh, be on a normal ward. I think. I think his his uh, his partner's able to go and see him. She was there when I spoke to him. Um, but yeah, it's really uh, that's just really critical to remember. You know, even when you think your chips are down, you've not had an audition, you've not had a part. If you've got your health, you have won the lottery. Like that is it the biggest lottery you won the lottery when you were born here human being like don't need any other stuff really to be happy you can be happy with you've got everything you need right now to be happy basically um dawn says i'll be at the meet up in august ross needs to give eric that hug i promised him yeah definitely uh dawn and fingers crossed he'll uh he'll be with us as well uh he'll be at that meet up um definitely jenna's in the house hope you're doing well um now eric take care all the best to you um jenna um did you send me an e you sent me an email didn't you? you found an acting class jenna's been looking i think for an acting class for a long time finally has found one i'm super excited for you so pleased you uh you found one which is uh which is great um brendan said that the feed was freezing it's all looking good for me at my end guys i've got a green light on everything so if it does freeze it's just facebook servers just can't um handle our uh, incredible energy that we have as a uh, as a group so just refresh the page and um and it should uh, it should come back on but i'm going to leave you guys um to go and listen if you're a premium member go and listen to that podcast with uh with jordan um, and Rob, it's not only like super, uh, well, super valuable in terms of the content that's in it and the questions that people are asking, um, but it's also really, really funny. <laughs> um, Rob is a uh, a very funny guy, really, really funny guy. Jordan is as well. Um, and it's there literally waiting for you right now. So at on this.tv for those premium members, go check it out. If you're in bed now, I know it's quite late. Um, have a listen to it whilst you're in bed. It's two hours long. Maybe you only what listen to an hour tonight and an hour, you know, the night after. Um, but it is good. Don't miss it. Go check it out. There's a lot of stuff in there, you know, that will that will you can learn from them like a lot that will save you potentially months, if not years, of your acting career getting stuff wrong. Rob's been incredibly successful, and so is Jordan. Um, you know, it depends what your class is success. I certainly don't label it as money, but for those who do. You know, if you want to earn money as an actor, Rob's one of the uh, probably the richest actor I've, I know. <laughs> I know personally um, in terms of you know uh, his execution of uh, landing big work. Um, he knows what he's doing, so he's a great guy to uh, to learn from. Um, so yeah, I will love you and uh, and leave you. I'm doing a podcast, so that podcast with Natalie will be available uh, probably next week or the week after. I'm recording a podcast with filmmaker Jason Wingard tomorrow. Um, he's coming around. He's just in the middle of a shoot of a new film he's doing called uh, Pavements. You might have seen it. It stars um, Steve Everts. Um, it's awesome CGI kind of uh, short film that he's making around homelessness. Um, very, very good. Very thought-provoking. All of Jason's films are great. Um, you might know Jason's film is out in cinemas called uh, Eaten by Lions, I think it was called. That was uh, out quite recently. He won Virgin Media Shorts a few years ago uh, with a film called 220. Uh, he won the grand prize there of 30 grand. Not bad, is it? If you're making your own short films, you know, so I'm always uh, big on people making their own content. Yeah, 30,000 quid he won from Virgin Media uh, when he won that festival. Um, definitely watching the podcast tomorrow, says Angie. Nice one, Angie. Um, you will uh, you'll enjoy it. Andrew, thank you for being in the podcast, mate. Thanks for uh, allowing us to phone you and uh, asking you questions. Uh, Rob seems like such a nice guy, says Sharon. He was the one having fun with the kids on Ackley Bridge. Uh, when I was there, ah, okay, were you on Ackley as well? Yeah, honestly, sound, sound bloke, uh, Rob, really, uh, really good. Um, Joanna, thank you so much for being here. So she's going to be back. Joanna's got a premium membership recently. Thanks for uh, for being here. Um, and yeah, let me know, uh, guys. I'm just going to close this down so I won't be able to see any of your uh, comments anymore, unfortunately. But let me know, as always, if I can uh, help you guys with anything. You can always get me on Twitter, at Ross A. Grant, at Ats on this TV. You can drop me an email, which is help. Um, at act on this dot tv as well um it takes me a little bit of time to uh get back to everybody but um i will always try and reply as uh, as often as i can uh well i'll always reply basically if not i'll always try i will it just might take me a few days 
I can't end this broadcast, guys. I'm looking for the place, <laughs> looking for the place, as I do every Monday night, where I can't freaking find uh, where the post is. There you go. Here it is. Facebook needs to get. They just need a button underneath the video when you're watching it as an admin that just says end. You have to go into the back end of this thing called like create a studio now, and it's all taking ages to load. It's still loading. Um, hopefully that'll be uh, there you go that's all uh, that's all good and for those who've just joined now and you've not got a clue what we're talking about about the podcast that I played out earlier the behind the scenes of um, here is a 60 second trailer of it with uh, Ackley Bridge star Rob James Collier you'll know him as Thomas from Downton Abbey as well and BAFTA award winning director um, of Ackley Bridge Jordan Hogg here's 60 seconds of it uh, you can watch a more in-depth 20 minute behind the scenes video on youtube.com forward slash watch Ross but if you want the good stuff um, and you want to listen to the full two-hour podcast, get a premium membership if you're an actor. ActOnThis.tv. It's 10 quid a month. Can't think of anything better. Also as well, one thing, I'll actually let you know about this now so people just don't start going mental at me. Um, this does not apply to any existing members of ActOnThis.tv. If you have a premium membership and you currently pay £10 a month, that's all you will ever pay. I want to reward your loyalty. I care about everybody who has invested in the site up to this point. But from September onwards... Um, the price of membership will be rising. Um, you will not have to pay any more if you get in and you have a membership before that point. I don't know what the cutoff date is yet. Um, it will be rising potentially because I'm putting out a, a feature a week and those features that you've seen the quality of tonight that are now roundtables with three guests sometimes take us down to London, involve studio hire. Um, the roundtable for Dark Money costs about 750 quid. Um they're very expensive. That's like three thousand pounds worth of features that I'm I'm creating every month. Um, we don't currently have the budget <laughs> for that. Um, so premium membership might, and I know this will shock people because they're like, "Oh my god!" But it might be twenty quid a month. Now it's still only a fiver a week. It's five quid a week. One coffee at Costa Coffee a week to get access to the greatest minds of the industry. You know, it's dirt cheap when you look at it for what it is. There's nothing else like it on the market. Um, for those who get in before September and that cut off, you won't ever pay any more than a tenner. Um, you just have to keep your membership active and keep your credit card like up to date. So if it goes, if it expires, um, just make sure that you go into your account and you update your credit card before it expires because I don't have control over billing. For security, I have zero control over your credit card, over anything to do with billing. Once you've set it up, I, the bank deals with it. Um, so you are in control of that for updating that. I'm not responsible for that at all. Um, but if you keep your credit card up to date, you'll never pay more than a tenner. Um, so it's another reason to get in now, basically. That's on this .tv. Do that. Um, here's a trailer of the vlog, and I'll catch up with you guys later on this week. Have an amazing time. If you know anything for you, let me know. Until next time, bye for now. I'm joined by Rob James Collier and Jordan Hollywood Hogg, um, the star and director of Ackley Bridge. Um, and we're here for you, mate, to answer anything you want to know. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 57 of Watch Ross, the one we're at Cleanbridge fawning. Hey, hey up, lads. <laughs> All right, boy, look who it is. So they get a prize? Sort of. Is it a bit like who wants to be a millionaire? How much of an input do you as a director have um, in the casting process and with the actors that you would like to work with? I only have three paid uh, jobs, so I need one more to be able to get on Spotlight. Work leads to work, so always be match fit. So instead of moaning that your agent's not getting you jobs or auditions, be ready for the moment that they do. <laughs>